We're having the greatest snow on earth. It's light, fluffy, powdery, just perfect for hitting the slope. It is, and tonight new research from Utah State University may prove that part of what makes it so great is truly something electrifying. Mm. ABC4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Gardner explains. It's true. <laughs> Utahns love a fresh powder day, but creating the greatest snow on earth may take more than just water and cold air. And we know that those dust particles and the ice that crystallizes off of them can act as charge carriers. That's right. Utah's snow may be a product of charge carriers, as in electricity. It helps us to see how many different factors can play a role in these you know, very natural, very common processes. They're usually a lot more complicated than we give them credit for, and we have to be mindful of that when we you know, try to make changes with the atmosphere. Joe Cooney, under the guidance of USU's Department of Plants, Soils, and Climate, began using a computer simulation to learn how water molecules form into ice crystals. He found that water molecules align differently under electric fields and attached to dust particles. Much like the water molecules and the dust particles, the electricity that helps form ice crystals isn't necessarily created out of thin air. Electricity in clouds normally comes about when air is moving vertically, up and down. And those turbulent interactions cause sort of like a demolition derby of the water droplets and the ice crystals that are present in those clouds. Assistant state climatologist Dr. John Meyer says that usually happens in the summer and often leads to lightning. But something similar happens in the winter, thanks to Utah's mountains, which force strong winds up and down their rock facades. And all of a sudden we have a battery in the clouds, and that's what creates thunder snow. These winter storms can charge dust particles, which then attract water in the air and speed up the formation of ice crystals, which can increase snowfall. Dr. Meyer says looking at these electrical storms on the molecular level could prove useful. And Joseph's taking it to the next level and trying to understand is there a way that we can take advantage of this and potentially increase the amount of snowfall that Utah gets. But there is a catch to this relationship. If you have a lot of those dust particles and not very much water, the, the water seems to tend to get split up basically between the dust particles and so none of them really can become of a size, you know, to fall out of the atmosphere and become precipitation. Reporting from Logan Cade Garner, ABC4 News.